In the previous video, we discussed nonlinear modulators. In this video, we're going to be discussing switching modulators. Switching modulators seem a lot more complex at first. That is to say, the theory on how they work is going to require a bit more knowledge. We're going to have to dig back into some of our Fourier series knowledge. However, once we are finished examining the Fourier series and thinking about switching modulators, you will see why the switching modulator is a very powerful, simple, and elegant modulator. So with that being said, let's start by thinking about modulation again. So remember, the goal of modulation is to multiply two signals together, right? You want to multiply your message that has the baseband with some carrier frequency. So this is the cosine wave 2 pi FCT. When you do that, you will move the message in the frequency domain to plus or minus FC. So can we replace this with some other signal? That's the question that we should ask. So we know, we know what the message is. We know that we can't replace the message, but could we replace that cosine wave with some other signal? So could we be clever and figure out a way to replace this? And the answer is yes, of course, but it's going to take us a, a little bit of math to get there. So re recall the trigonometric Fourier series. Uh, you can write it like this, where you have an infinite summation of some coefficient multiplied by these cosine waves, where you have some n omega ct, right, your carrier uh, frequency, and then some phase. Now, if you were to modulate this, right, the modulation of some trigonometric Fourier series would simply introduce this mt term here. Now, if we were to expand this, start writing out the terms, right? So n, first it's equal to 0, then it's equal to 1, 2, so on, all the way up until n is equal to infinity, right? If we were to do that, we would get this. So first we have one term, then a second term, then a third term. And we're starting to see now, okay, there's now a, quite a few different waves. Uh, this first one, uh, this one is actually... Uh, zero, so this is start. This frequency is zero, so that might be like a DC component. Uh, then this first one, right? So this first, when n equals one in your series, that one's at our frequency of interest. When n equals two, we're at twice the frequency of interest. So if we were to write this Fourier series, multiply our message by it, start distributing out the terms, we're going to see that this could be thought of as if you have your message at a number of different frequencies. Okay, so this first part, you could think of this first term as your message being at uh, some DC frequency. Your second term, you have your message at your carrier frequency. The third term, uh, sorry, pardon me, the second term at twice the carrier frequency, and so on. So each successive term of your Fourier series, simply moving the, changing the, the carrier frequency uh, of this cosine wave. And <clears throat> so if you were to do that, we could think of it visually like this, that we have this, uh, for, we could write some wave as a Fourier series with an infinite number of, of terms, and each term progressively moving out uh, higher in frequency, moving our message, our original message, baseband message into higher and higher frequencies. So, right, this first one is here, then the second one is at our, our carrier frequency, the third one's twice the carrier frequency so on. So notice that uh, two, no matter what this uh, theta n is, no matter what phase it is, this is actually not going to cause any shifting of the bandwidth center in this frequency domain. Now combine this with a concept that we also learned previously, which is that if we want to apply a filter, we could remove the portions of the message we don't want. So if we had some Fourier series, that we wrote out and we thought of it as moving our message to various frequencies. So various um, uh, numbers of the carrier frequency. We could see that, okay, well, if we were smart, made a nice uh, filter, we could filter out all of the components that we don't want. So this part of the Fourier series that's at the high frequency, we'll just filter it out. And then when we go into three, uh, omega C, right, somewhere up here, we can also just filter that part out. 
right? So we could just keep filtering out the, the high frequencies and be left with just the one part of our series that's at the frequency that we're most interested in. So we just take our, our filter, multiply our message, uh, our filter in the frequency domain, multiply by our message in the frequency domain, multiply by our Fourier series in the frequency domain. And then we have a, a system where we have moved our message from our baseband, right? So we've moved it from whatever our base is uh, out to our carrier frequency. And that's, that's modulation. So now the question should be, so we've seen that we have this idea that if we could write out some Fourier series that includes something, uh, some factors uh, at our frequency of interest, if we could make something that does this, then we could uh, basically perform a modulation. So the question is, how do we realize this in a circuit? How do we realize a circuit that has a Fourier series that contains an infinite summation of these cosine waves where each component, each term in that series is at some um, number of our carrier frequency. So in the next video, we're going to see how we could make a circuit that gives us this Fourier series that results in moving our message to progressively different and higher uh, factors of our carrier frequency.